Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's August 20th, 2019, and you are watching the Theo Trade evening video with about 25 minutes left to play inside of the cash session. Freeze the screen right there. The S&Ps, they're just off of our 2911 gravity point down just about 15 handles and given back a pretty good portion of yesterday's rally. Now, I'm going to spend a few moments looking at the broader markets and then, well, we're going to spend the remainder of the time discussing what's to come as this week progresses. With that, the S&P futures, you know, some of the volume has picked up a little bit today. We're doing about uh, 1.2 million contracts. Again, I was mentioning in uh, in last night's video, it was dead. It was beyond dead. But uh, you can see with, again, about 25 minutes left to uh, to trade, the, uh, the volume is going to surge past it. We may even do as much as uh, 1.5 million S&P contracts today with uh, a little bit more turbulence inside of the markets. One of the things, though, that is very, very apparent is that we are just trapped like a rat in a cage right on this 2911 gravity point for those of you that have tuned in gravity point 2911 then below that is 2842 but one thing has become very apparent in some of the trade that we've seen in just the uh, the last few weeks we may very well right here right now be trapped inside of what uh, we term a volatility box. Now, for those of you, again, if you've been around for a while, you've seen me discuss this extensively, and it's just, it's a range in the markets, okay, where we're literally just pinging back and forth. However, breaking either side of the volatility box becomes rather extreme. I will remind you, uh, again, of another volatility box that we saw more recently, uh, not too distant past here on the screen, and that happens to be volatility box. We dropped into it again, coming into uh, October of 2018. And uh, here it is. All right. In all of its splendor, breaking to the downside was absolutely wild. Now, at this point in time, again, it does appear that the last few weeks, all we're doing right now, and we're actually going to put levels to this is channeling and again when i say i'm going to put levels to it i'm going to give you some really specific numbers kind of channeling between the 2940 and right down to the bottom edge of this let's call it 28 okay 20. uh that is effectively all right the range that we're seeing in this particular volatility box and the irony is this uh this volatility box is kind of leading up to a little bit of a crescendo and I'm going to highlight that here in just a moment. Now, before I get into, uh, into again, that, uh, that kind of crescendo, I want to look at the bonds for just a second. The bonds. So zoom into the bonds for just a, a brief moment. Everything they lost yesterday, they've already regained today. Uh, keep an eye on that because a lot of people were like, it's okay. You can come out of hiding. You know, the, the yield curve has uninverted and, and all of a sudden, here we are, we're right back to it. This happens to be the uh, the 10 year, the 10 year. Again, we're just sitting right near the bottom of where rates have been about 1.56% on the 10 year. Nevertheless, the bonds, they're rocking to the upside. And what's that done? It's taking the financials right to where? Well, what we call the Maginot line. Now, I want to remind everybody that throughout the remainder of this week, the financials matter. And why do they matter so much? Okay. The, the point that I want to make with these financials before we actually talk a little bit in detail about what's coming, that 20, uh, 2650 level, every time we cross below it, every recent occurrence of crossing below this 2650 level has been tumultuous volatility in the broader marketplace. Keep that in mind. Everything starts turning negative. People start, you know, it's coming to an end. And it all relates back to the financials. The thing in the financials, though, that's a bit alarming is, again, their volatility, it's up there. I mean, we have a 50 cent expected move. That's just for the remainder of this week. Now, let's cut to the chase. Again, you don't want to talk too much about individual stocks. You don't want to think too much about individual stocks right now. Okay, This is a marketplace that in this kind of, again, volatility box has actually seen decent levels of correlation. That is what the S&P futures are doing, what the S&P 500 is doing. So goes most of the stocks in here. You know, there's a few always, there's always going to be a few odd stocks out. Oh, okay, this had earnings, that had earnings, this had news on it. Again, always a few odd stocks out. Nevertheless, the correlation coefficients have been high, which means pay attention to the broader market. 
pay less attention to individual stocks. Okay, where are we going with this? Well, I'm going to show you exactly where we're going with this. Have faith in the Fed? Eh, it's a big question mark. There's a few things that you're going to be dealing with as this week kind of progresses. So let's get down to it. Come over here to the market watch. I'm actually going to pop into the calendar. First and foremost, on Wednesday, on Wednesday, we will be dealing with, well, you have a petroleum status report. That'll be exciting. Now, what we're actually looking at is the FOMC minutes. Now, the marketplace right now isn't really pricing a whole lot of risk into the FOMC minutes. How do I read into that? I go to the SPX. I look at tomorrow's expiration. And tomorrow's expiration inside of the SPX, okay, eh, it's kind of lackluster. I mean, listen, between today, right here, right now, and tomorrow, we're still pricing almost a $22 move. So that's not bad. I mean, we've seen whole weeks in the summer. Last summer, we saw an entire week where we had like that kind of expected move. So it's not like horrifically low volatility. It's just that the FOMC minutes, it's not really pricing all that much risk. But Okay, buyer or seller for that matter, beware, because if you take a look at this uh, this Friday expiration, yeah, 18% volatility. Now, that's not as rocking as some of the action that we saw, you know, recently in the, uh, in the markets, but a $42 expected move. And again, that's where we're supposed to close within. Yeah, that's uh, be warned. There's a little bit of volatility pricing in. And I, uh, I kind of feel that this may creep up a little bit because uh, the risk is building. Why? You got Jackson Hole. What is Jackson Hole? Back to the calendar for a second. Great. There's FOMC minutes and then there's ECB minutes. That's the European Central Bank, yada, yada, yada. And then all of a sudden, boom, here we go. Jerome Powell, okay? Jerome Powell is going to deliver a speech early on Friday morning. It's actually, okay, when the market is open, the whole key to this speech, okay, is this. Will Powell play ball? Is he going to play ball? And you're like, eh, I'm not exactly sure what you're uh, indicating here. Listen, the marketplace is pricing in all but assured another cut to rates coming up at their very next meeting. This, okay, this Jackson Hole is where if there's going to be any leniency, okay, on the part of Powell, you're going to hear it in this particular speech. Everybody wants to know, okay, if he's going to play ball because they've already set up, okay, they've already set up in the last FOMC meeting that they're saying this is a mid-cycle adjustment. We adjust it down. We don't intend this to be a big cutting cycle, yada, yada, yada. So what did he do? painted himself into a little bit of a corner. It's actually what I term Jerome in the box. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't think of anything better than that, but Jerome in the box. So uh, you wind him up and once in a while he pops out and he goes, surprise, interest rate cut. You got a Jerome in the box right now. And you're going to figure out real quick here if he's going to play ball. And between now and then we're going to have volatility tantrums aplenty. Why? The marketplace, as I keep saying, it wants to send a message to the Fed. See, the Fed has got an incredibly, okay, no-win situation. They are backed into a corner here. The problem is that where economic data ain't half bad here in the U.S. Come on, the economic data is not half bad. We start looking at Germany and, you know, maybe in China, and some of the economic data is not so good. So, of course, Jerome Powell, okay, could just state, overseas concerns, we may have to do another cut. I'm telling you, a lot of this is going to be coming down, all right? to this Friday speech, if he's gonna go, what I call double down dove dive. What's a double down dove dive? That's when Jerome Powell, okay, does again, another complete 180 and starts to turn around and say, well, things have changed. It's only been a few weeks since we heard from the FOMC, but things have changed. And now we're actually considering another cut to rates, okay? The whole question here is, all right, is he going to relieve the marketplace or is he actually going to back further into a corner okay and indicate no rate cut i'm telling you there is volatility in them their market right now okay based on this and it is absolutely unequivocally being priced as this big kind of binary event and when i talk about like a binary event what i want you to see is look the three-day options, okay, they're jacked up to almost an 18% vol. The one-day options, all right, 14 vol. Then even if you look at the Monday expiration, it drops off to like a 15 vol. 
all the risk is being kind of packed into this Friday expiration, and rightfully so. It actually explains, okay, why some of the risk is really packed into the financials right now as well. The financials have gone like hypersensitive because they know if he doesn't play ball, okay, it is going to spell trouble in this marketplace. That's why I'm saying, again, push aside preconceived notions about what you think, all right, on individual stocks. You're like, well, what about Apple? What about my Netflix? Listen, if we're going to hit, okay, this volatility patch, it's not going to make a difference. They're all going to move in accordance with the S&P 500. As I said, correlation coefficients have been relatively high. Okay, in days the market's really rocking to the upside or the downside, you've actually had 90 to 10, okay, advanced decline lines over here today. Yeah, we're down. We're sitting on a gravity point. Nevertheless, still relatively high correlations. Think about what we've discussed over here. Again, the other aspect that I'll leave you with is if you take a look at the week at large, it's about a $58 expected move. Again, about a $58 expected move right here. All right, that's $58 higher or $58 lower. Where, re, uh, where are we right now on the week? You know, nowhere. Okay, we've gone nowhere fast. We actually rallied up a little bit. You know, on Monday, we sold off a little bit on Tuesday. Again, we're sitting right in this volatility box, right off of a gravity point. Again, everything points to this kind of key kind of inflection point in the marketplace. What? The stars have aligned. We're on a gravity point. Okay. That's number one. Number two, the bonds, they've actually set up for a little bit more of a rally. Just in case the marketplace decides to tank, the bonds have rallied a little uh, a bit. Then we actually have volatility futures. The volatility futures, they're flat. When I say they're flat, they were in backwardation or, okay, what is a volatility inversion? But look, 45, all right, so that's 1845, maybe a little further out, 1857. I mean, for the most part, when you start looking at that skew, it's relatively flat. It says that the risk now is effectively the same as the risk later is the same as the risk further out in time. That's kind of what like that flat skew indicates. Again, huge inflection point there. Inflection point at the 2911. Inflection point inside of the bonds. The bonds point to more risk. That's just because plain and simple, everybody's nervous. Then you got to look at the financials. The financials, where are they? Oh, they're 2650 on the button over here. Need I go further? Go down to the bottom of the screen. Guess what? You actually have, okay, traders that are buying volatility today hmm. well it's a down day you should expect them to buy volatility but they're buying volatility in the vvix the volatility of the volatility index and they're buying that at 100. again a lot of signs point to some risk but it really does it comes down to this this binary event this jackson hole event which uh we're all gonna find out okay you got faith in the fed well Maybe, but uh, we're going to find out real quick here if uh, Jerome Powell is going to play ball. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.